fresh and delicious thanks to Mylar. Welcome to Survival Theory. Today we're going to take a look at Mylar bags, talk a little bit about them. Um, I'm going to mention some things you may not have heard of before, so let's get busy. So first, what is Mylar? This is not Mylar. This is aluminum. This is Mylar, the clear coat that you can't see on the inside of the aluminum. Mylar is a clear material, it's very strong and flexible, and they either spray or adhere aluminum to the outside of it so that light can get into it. It also helps keep the air out because the aluminum is not, is not permeable by air. So this is a an aluminum coated Mylar bag. So now that you know a little bit about Mylar bags, let's talk about ordering them. So I ordered these five gallon bags this many months ago and they came folded up. So you go to open one up. Oh no. Look at that. See that? It looks like there's holes all in it. So you get your Mylar bag and you open it up and everywhere it's been folded you can see the light coming through. Oh no, it has holes in it. Well, hold on a second, hold on a second. Mylar is a very, very strong, clear material. And they've coated that Mylar with this aluminum. So everywhere you fold it, you're likely to get creases and breaks in that aluminum, which will let a little bit of light in. However, the Mylar Unless it's an actual puncture, the mylar should still be intact. So even though this won't pass the flashlight test, it should uh, seal just fine. So that's kind of a myth about the bags that, you know, if you shine a light in there and you can see the light, or shine the light on the outside of it, you see the light on the inside through the little, what appear to be holes. That doesn't mean your bag is compromised. The only way to know for sure is perhaps inflate it, seal it up on the edge and see if you can uh, take some air out. Matter of fact, let's do that with this bag that appears to have all the holes in it. So first thing I'll do is I'll seal almost all of the edge with the hot iron. Pretty typical for a Mylar bag. So I've sealed it all but for a tiny little bit there. Now I'll inflate that with the straw. I'll seal that up. Easy peasy. So now I've inflated it. Now remember it has, supposedly has holes all over it. Make sure this is cooled down enough. Alright, so. I don't hear any air coming out. I'm definitely... Okay, I just told you about and demonstrated the bag that appeared to be punctured but was not punctured. That was just the aluminum creasing and 
you're able to see through the mylar on the inside. But now the flip side of that coin is ordering bags that come all folded up, especially larger bags like these. I have three right here that have been folded extensively and they even appear to have cut marks on them, you know, scratch marks. And just like the other bag, these will not pass the flashlight test. But the flip side of that coin is, these actually do have holes in them. They've got pinholes everywhere it was creased. So what that is, is it's a um, cheaper quality, Perhaps it's not true mylar, or they were just handled wrong. You know, I don't, I don't know how the bunch of marks got there, but when they arrived at my door, they were folded like this and had actual holes everywhere they were creased. So some may pass the, um, the test for sealing and some may not. A good mylar bag will pass the test unless it's actually been um, actually been cut or punctured. But just creasing it and exposing the clear mylar does not compromise the sealability of these. These three, however, will not hold air. So what I do with these larger ones is I open them up and I look for the holes and I kind of guesstimate where the holes are and I cut out sections and make smaller bags because unfortunately this company did not offer a refund I won't be ordering from them again but I was able to cut some of these bags up into smaller bags that do not have holes in them so now I got a bunch of small ones but if I wanted small ones I would have ordered small ones but what can you do, right? Lessons learned. So what I do now, I order from Wise Dry. Found them on Amazon. Wise Dry. And they have some top quality Mylar bags. They come with these oxygen absorbers. And I like the smaller size of the oxygen absorbers because you can use less if you need to instead of just getting the big ones. Look, look at these. These are folded. They're not folded. They're flat in the box. That's how they arrived. So there are no creases in them. And they even, they even flat, passed the flashlight test because they've never been folded. So I know they're good to go. And these are one gallon size. I wanted to get some five gallon, but I could not find any even available on the internet unless it was from a company that, because of this experience, I just, I didn't trust them to order the five gallon bags. So I'm wanting to store some rice. I use this one gallon bag. Nothing special here. I'm going to put 10 cups of rice in this one gallon bag. One. Two. Ten. Always make sure I put 10 plus maybe a little bit more. Just so if I trade this during the apocalypse, no one comes after me for trying to short them. This isn't a specialty Mylar bag. It's just the regular smooth one. So the food saver cannot pull all the air out of this. But there's a little trick you can use to make it work just like a food saver bag. I'll show you that. So what I've got here is a food saver bag. And you have this rough side and the smooth side. This is a scrap piece or a very small bag that I won't need because it's just too small. So I'll cut the rough side out. Wham, 
bam, nothing to it. I don't need this clear stuff anymore. The smooth stuff. So I've got this one with the rough, rough feel to it. I'll take this food saver bag and cut a strip of that. I'll cut it in half. So now I've got a couple strips right here of the rough, rough edge or rough face. Now you see what I did there? I stuck them inside the bag, sticking out a little bit. Because of the rough surface there, it will allow the food saver to suck the air out of the bag, out of each end where I have these. There's now airflow between the layers everywhere I have these stuck in there. But now I gotta drop an oxygen absorber in there. So I've got my oxygen absorber in there. Let me put these little things back in the corner. Now I just drop it in there. And start it up. Sucking it out real good. Just the way it's supposed to. Now it's sealing. And voila. Sometimes you can pull these out. Yep, and I'll seal that up. Pull this one out. Well, that one's actually sealed up pretty good. I'll make sure by just running the iron over it, giving it that final seal. That one's all sealed up. Cut off this excess. There we go. Now I like mine not sealed up all the way like a brick where you can't move them. I like it where I can still maneuver the material inside of it so I can shape the bag a little bit depending on where I'm going to store it. Now I have that oxygen absorber in there and there's so little air space in there that the oxygen is taken care of. There's a minimal amount of air. There's just enough air where I can kind of shift the contents of this rice around, flatten it the way I like it, or maybe even, you know, make the bag less tall and fold it, you know, depending on what my needs are on what I store it in. In this case, it's going to be a five-gallon bucket, so I might want to kind of put everything down, flatten it, lay it flat in the bucket, and then just stack them up. So a few notes about the oxygen absorbers. You probably need about uh, 100 cc's, you know, the small size, for a one gallon bag if you're getting uh, putting rice and beans, things like that in there. If you're using uh, pasta shells, things like that, you probably need to double it 200 cc's because of the air volume. Now, these oxygen absorbers, they they don't absorb air, they just absorb oxygen. So it's not going to shrink your bag up all the way. It will remove about maybe 20% of the volume of your air because that's about the volume of oxygen in the air. So keep that in mind. So you want to try to remove as much air as possible. So maybe you learned something about Mylar, maybe you didn't. But either way, thanks for watching Survival Theory. Please share, like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.